Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and in this video I want to talk about the Optolong L Extreme Filter. I just finished my review on astrobackyard.com and I am so impressed with this filter for astrophotography. Honestly, I was just in the office processing images I took on the weekend with this filter and I had to interrupt myself, run down here, set up my makeshift studio and record this video right now. I wasn't sponsored or paid by Optolong or anyone else for that matter to make this video. I just want to be the guy that tells you about this filter so you can thank me later. So right out of the gate, if you're not familiar with these dual band pass narrow band filters, tri band, quad band, basically the idea is you use them with a one shot color camera, whether that's a DSLR, mirrorless or dedicated astronomy camera, and it isolates the specific narrow band passes in the visible spectrum to create a full color image in one shot. Now, astrophotographers ideally use monochrome cameras and dedicated narrow band filters, six nanometer, three nanometer, and HA, O3, and S2 to build their images slowly over time, getting some serious signal with a monochrome sensor. This is kind of the cheat code with a color camera to get it all in one shot. Now, you're not gonna get as strong a signal, of course, as you would with a monochrome camera, but you can get some really impressive images, and I'm a huge fan of this type of astrophotography, especially if you've got limited clear sky time, depending on where you live. Maybe you only get two or three hours a night, if that, and it's, you know, 10 days between your imaging sessions. So maximizing your clear sky time with a dual narrowband filter like this is amazing. Okay, before we go any further, I just wanted to show you what the images look like straight out of the camera. It's one thing to look at a fully processed image and say, wow, that looks great. But sometimes it's good to know what you're getting straight out of the camera, what you're starting with. So what you see here is an individual subframe on the butterfly nebula, five minutes in length with the QHY268C and that Optolong L Extreme filter. And I'm gonna go ahead and stack this now with dark frames and flats, just to show you what the stacked image looks like, the linear data before I start playing with it. So here's the image in Deep Sky Stacker. It looks absolutely incredible before I've done anything to it in Photoshop. And that is the power of this filter. For anyone that's stacked an image, in APP or Deep Sky Stacker or Pixinsight for that matter, to look at the linear data and to see this much depth, this much contrast, and this much just overall detail in the linear data will know how exciting this actually is. So I wanted you to see this before I did any tweaking. Last year, the Optolong L Enhance filter came out and that is very similar to this one. And a lot of people are saying, okay, well, is it worth it to upgrade from the L Enhance to the L Extreme? I'm gonna say it is. I've used both and I loved the L Enhance, but the narrower band passes of the L Extreme, in my opinion, are a huge improvement. So the L Enhance had a 24 nanometer band pass range in the O3 and H beta, and then 10 nanometers in H alpha. The L Extreme, on the other hand, is seven nanometers in HA and seven nanometers in O3. No H beta, no area between the H beta and O3, so even more isolated, blocks out even more light pollution, and those O3 and HA band passes for many of the amazing nebula in the night sky is exactly what you want and nothing else. So here's what makes this filter so special. Going into this whole thing, Star Arizona, believe it or not, sent me this filter and I have a great relationship with them, and I, but I was like, oh, okay, you're, you're gonna send me a, an Optolong L Extreme filter? That's, that's cool, maybe I'll take a look at it. And uh, the, the guy I talked to there was like, no, you need to use this filter. I, I really think you need to use it. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll try it out. He's like, no, you need to use it. I'm like, oh, okay, it's like, what's so special about this filter? So I looked in it a little more and I was like, okay, even narrower band passes, maybe that's an improvement, maybe more light pollution blocking power. But it wasn't until I started taking images with it with two cameras, the Canon EOS RA and the QHY268C that I saw. Oh my goodness, they absolutely nailed this filter. I don't know that there's any other filter on the market that does these two band passes at seven nanometers each. Obviously, I'm not an optical expert. I don't know how they made the filter with the layers and everything, but this is really an incredible filter and it's rather affordable when you compare it to some of the others. Now, many of you know that I love my Radian Triad Ultra filter because of that magic I spoke of earlier, capturing a full color image in the city, and I really do love that filter. 
if you want to get a little more isolated and to be honest for a smaller group of targets because it lets in less light so only emission nebulae planetary nebulae uh, supernova remnants you got to try the veil nebula those type of targets with the l extreme are just so unbelievable the image that got me so excited about this filter was the one I was just processing and that's the Helix Nebula. Now this is very low in the sky from my location and right into the light dome. So super challenging. To shoot it in broadband would be a complete waste of time. Yet with this dual band pass narrow band filter, it was one of the most exciting images I've ever seen taken out of my backyard. Something you need to really consider before investing in this filter is the camera you're using. I haven't tested it, but I have a feeling it is much less effective with say an older color DSLR, maybe a Rebel, something like my Canon T3i. Not because it isn't a great capable camera, it's just because those narrow band passes at seven nanometer, you really have to pour on the exposure time and maybe crank the ISO and you'll probably get a really noisy image. Another challenge would be that framing up your target and focusing through that narrow band pass will be difficult. Only the brightest stars in the sky will be visible. So doing that method of framing up your target, taking test exposures, you probably have to take 30 to 60 second test exposures to even find your object in some cases. So if you have an older DSLR, it might be a bit challenging. And what I relate that to is that my astronomic 12 nanometer HA filter clip-in that I've used with my T3i, my 60DA, all my DSLRs, even that at 12 nanometers could be hard. It was hard at times to focus that because again, only the bright stars were visible and you really have to hit that four or five minute mark to get usable signal out of that camera. And then you're introducing thermal noise and in the summer, it's just a mess. So although that's a useful filter, seven nanometers is that much stronger. So I can just picture someone using an older DSLR and struggling with this filter. Now, best case scenario, a modern DSLR mirrorless camera, something like the EOS RA, I can crank the ISO, I can shoot five minutes long, it has no problem with noise taking those types of images and plenty of signal with this strong filter in front of it. So the Canon EOS RA is a great fit for the Optolong L Extreme. Probably an even better fit the QHY 268C. So an APS-C crop sensor, DSLR size sensor on a cooled, dedicated astronomy camera. So that back illuminated sensor, all these features that make it better than a traditional camera for long exposure astrophotography images, but of course, full color as well. So you throw the Optolong L Extreme in front of a QHY 268C, and my goodness, you'll experience moments like I just had in the office when I looked at my data on the Helix Nebula. So the images I've taken so far are the Lagoon Nebula. I've taken images of the Butterfly Nebula, of the Helix Nebula, and what was the other one? Oh, the Veil, of course, that was in my last video. So that was the Optolong L Extreme and the QHY 268C. I guess the other thing you need to think about is your optical system and the speed. With that being said, some of my best images were shot at F7 on the Esprit 150. So I really think this filter is a winner. It's not just me saying that. I can just imagine the flood of images that are gonna come in the astrophotography community over the next year or so with this Optolong L Extreme filter. It's not fair when I think about what I had to go through 10 years ago for an image or even five years ago because filters like the Optolong L Extreme didn't exist but they do now and man, it's a good time to be alive. So I think a lot of people will come back in six months time and say, Trevor, you were right about that L Extreme filter. So if you wanna see some image examples taken with this filter, you can go to my review on astrobackyard.com. You can go follow me on Instagram, see the images I've been sharing with it and others. It's not just me saying this filter is great. Anything that has this kind of an impact on our hobby is really exciting because this helps color camera shooters from the city and heavy light pollution take incredible images. I hate to use that cliche phrase game changer, but this one really is. So I'm so excited about the Optolong L Extreme filter and I can't wait to see what you do with it. Until next time, clear skies. <laughs>